Hello, this is Dr. Armand again, bringing you another exciting demonstration of the Synergy S, the Docker Synergy S system. So today, well, in this uh, episode, we'll be looking at collecting a unit cell on a particular set of data. So I'm going to share the screen so you can follow along with us. Okay, so I have already mounted a crystal onto the, the fractometer, and again, what we use is a nylon loop. So if I kind of highlight, you can kind of see the loop in red. So within this nylon loop, I have the crystal mounted, which is shown here. Right there. And so always, we, in the previous video, I showed you how to mount and align a crystal into the x-ray beam. And the uh, most intense part of the beam is located in this circle right here. So that's about 100 microns. So as you can see, my crystal is slightly bigger than the, the most intense part of the beam, but it's OK. The majority of the crystal is in the beam. So what we can do is, if I rotate it 90 degrees, we'll see that it's still aligned. And so what do we use to mount the crystal into the, uh, the loop is we use a very thin film of periton oil. It's a very thick oil. And you can kind of see it shimmer right there. So in this area here, the oil forms like a little film and it sticks the, the crystal onto it. Because remember, this is at cryo temperatures. So we're once you the cryo, the cold nitrogen air touches the crystal, it kind of glues it to the oil so it doesn't move. So again, you always need to mount and align your crystal so that it's in the center of the beam. So with that said, we're going to exit and I'm going to show you the screening properties. Now, whenever you mount a crystal, it's always best to screen it first to see if it's an ideal crystal or not. And if it's not a good crystal, it'll show up most of the time in the screening process. So you can always go back and try another crystal to mount. Now, the, uh, selecting the crystal is probably the most important part in this process. Because if you don't select a good quality crystal, it's going to cause problems in the data collection, and maybe even the data assignment. And so this is the screening uh, window, the options. So when we screen, we're actually not rotating the crystal any. The crystal is at one set position, and we're just checking one side of the crystal to see how well it diffracts. And from that, uh, we'll be able to uh, determine whether or not it's a good crystal or not. So the approximate theta, uh, you know, some people use zero. Other people use, you know, you can set it to whatever you want. Now, I like negative 35 because when I, I was, I used the older version, Crystal Clear program, and with the older version detector, it usually would set it to negative 35 theta. People also set it to zero degrees. It's up to you. The fee offset is default. I didn't change that. It's set to 20. The scan axis is omega. That's default. The detector distance is generally the shortest the distance, distance, detector distance you can have. For this Synergy S, I believe it's around 34 or 35 millimeters, so I set it to 36. And then you can set the exposure time. Now, the exposure time is a little tricky because depending on your makeup of your crystal and the quality of the crystal, you may, <clears throat> you may need to adjust this. So what we're looking for when we do a screening is we want to at least generate, you know, approximately 15 reflections. 
So if we don't get 15 reflections, we'll go and we'll increase the exposure time or we'll try keep your crystal. So I'm just going to set it for two seconds. That's like my default. You can set it to what you like. So once we do all that, we hit OK and screen. So now it's going to move the goniometer, which holds the crystal to the appropriate uh, phi, omega, kappa, omega, and theta angles. And then it's going to warm up the x-ray uh, tube because it's been idle for a few hours and it's been shut down. So that's what it's doing right now. It's ramping it up to 50 kilovolts and 1 milliamp. Now, as you can see, we're using copper radiation. That's what's shown here. And copper is for small molecules, probably the more robust, uh, more powerful uh, radiation to use. We also have ability to do moly, but what would take copper maybe 10 minutes might take moly a few hours. So we always prefer copper uh, when doing diffraction experiments. So right now it's ramping up, it's almost there. And it's gonna quickly do about 10 images at those current angle positions. So it's hard to see the rev the resolution rings, but here you can see it says about 1.15 inches, 1.27, 1.06. So you want the, the fraction spots to go to very high resolution. You need the low resolution data to start solving the structure, but you need the high resolution data to help refine the structure. So now we're about getting ready. And what you'll notice is that the shutter says open, that means x-rays are being let out to the fracking on the crystal, and these are the images that we see. So again, shutter is open, data is being collected. All right. So you see we have spots, so this is about five angstroms, this is about 1.26 angstroms, and so you see, we do have some spots that come out. So there's one around 1.2 inches. And again, this is only two second data collection. So from the diffraction spots, they don't look bad. It's pretty good. Well, it's a pretty well diffraction sample. Now, if we come over here, we look at the reflections. So we had a total of 189 reflections that meets our threshold of at least 15. There were 179 that were accepted. It gives us a percentage of about 95%. Now this is just a loose requirement. So sometimes what may happen is you may have good diffraction data, but your percent reflections accepted may be low. If you see that, it's probably best to go on and do what's called the pre-experiment. So another thing we need to look at is the uh, unit cell. So here it, it checks the, the Cambridge Structure Database and determines if there's any unit cell similar to the unit cell that was calculated. And so what you can do is you can click on it and it'll pop up all the unit cells that are similar to your unit cells. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to kind of look through these and see if any of these would match your uh, crystal. Now from those 10 images, or 10 or 20 images, I forgot how many they did, let's see. Yeah, we did 20 images. So from those 20 images in that quick amount of time, it was able to determine the crystal system. So it thinks, and this again is a very quick uh, determination, it thinks it may be primitive tetragonal with the point group four upon M. 
It also gives us a proposed unit sale as well. Next, we need to look at the number of reflections in the highest resolution range, so about 1.25 to 1.17. You see we have about 49 reflections. The I over sigma is about six, so the higher this value is, the better quality data. That is, about six is not that great. Usually you want 10 or better. But again, this was at two seconds. And so based on this, we should go ahead and run the pre-experiment, which is a more thorough examination of the crystal. So we're going to go down here where it says experiment, and we're going to click on edit. And so here you would put, you know, your sample name. We'll call this X-ray one. Then we find a folder. We'll put it in the training folder and hit OK. Yes. We can put the proposed formula. It doesn't have to be the exact formula, but just the atom type. So I know it has carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. The sample, we'll just call it uh, run one. Now the exposure time was determined based on our screening. So if you, typically you would use the exposure time suggested by the uh, Crystalis Pro, but that's, you know, if you want to change it, you're more than welcome to. You can use the uh, bar here to change it, or you can type in what you want. It was 0.5, so let's put it back at 0.5 and hit OK. Generally, you don't have to mess with this. You can just use what the what Crystalis Pro determine what the scan time should be. There are lots of different types of experiments. Uh, complete data for publication, a quick look, redundant data for publication, absolute structure, and time constraint. Uh, generally, what I like to use is redundant data for publication because typically you like to have a little bit of redundancy in your data, so it's kind of like it makes sure that a spot is where it's supposed to be. Now, the set target I over sigma is default 15, so you could adjust this for weekly diffracting samples, but 15 is the default for small molecules. Resolution for copper is about 0.84, that's default, and redundancy is default 5%. So you can also put a little bit of information about the sample, so you can click on sample description if you know it's clear. It's actually, this one is colorless. It's a uh, plate, and that's about all we know. So we hit OK. And now you're ready to exit and start pre-experiment. So now it's going to do a little bit longer scan. It's going to do a, a couple of different scans. So it's going to do scans of different B, kappa, omega, theta to get the best optimal parameters for the uh, full data collection. So it's running through, it's checking, it's uh, moving again. So that's what it's, uh, what's happening right now. The goniometer moves another preset of conditions. Those are the scans and then moves to another preset. Again, scanning and at the same time determining the intensity statistics, the unit cell, et cetera. And it also gives us a strategy. It says, okay, uh, to do a full collection on this, we're going to need about 13 or 2,700. It changes because it's doing it uh, frames, which are, you could say, pictures. And it's going to take about 22 minutes. Now, you see, originally it was uh, tetragonal, it predicted, but now from doing the pre experiment, it's actually dropped in crystal symmetry. It dropped that back down to monochrome. So just Doing the screening gives you an idea of the unit cell, but doesn't, I wouldn't take it as a hard fact because when you do a pre experiment, it's a more uh, detailed uh, collection. So now the pre experiment is done. It's calculating the strategy used for this experiment. So again, the final result, it still thinks it's tetragonal. It suggests primitive lattice. There's been about you know, 91% of the reflections were accepted. 
you know, the approximate is about 85 to 90. So as long as you have 85 to 90 percent or more reflections are accepted, that's a good indication to continue with the uh, data collection. So again, that's a rough ballpark, 85, 90 percent. But again, lower, you'd have to use your judgment on that. So to tell you about a few things about the, the strategy window. So resolution is set to 0.837, that's default. The loud group, it suggests uh, tetragonal. However, based on my experience, I know for a fact that it is not tetragonal. So since I know, based on doing this experiment before, that it's not tetragonal, I'm actually gonna do a full data, a full sphere of data collection. So when you use uh, tetragonal, since you have symmetry, it doesn't need to collect a full sphere of data. If you collect a partial sphere of data, and then from that, using symmetry, you can, it can generate the rest of the data. But since I've used this crystal before, and I know that, hey, it's not actually tetragonal, it's more like the orthorhombic, I'm going to select the triclinic uh, system. Detector distance is default. We're going to collect redundant data. Again, you have all those same options and even a few more that you can do. I set the redundancy to five, because when I set redundancy to five, you see that we get 100% completion, so that's what you want. And now since we've changed the loud group, we're going to calculate a new strategy. So in tetragonal, it would take 11 minutes. For uh, triclinic, it's gonna take longer because we gotta collect more data. So instead of 1,380 frames, we're going to have to collect 5,364 frames. It's going to take 45 minutes, again, because we're going to get a full sphere of data from this data collection. And our completeness is 100% in P1 bar. So you want 100% completeness always. Now over here is the collection time, or the data scan times. So we have 0.13 seconds and 0.53 seconds. These are typically different by a factor of four. That's how they use it. So the, the near, the, the uh, lower resolution is quicker. The higher resolution takes a little bit longer because you need more radiation to develop more spots. And if we click on the run list, we can see all the different runs that this experiment will do. It tells you the Omega start and end, or not the Omega, excuse me. So we got the Kappa angle, the phi angle, the detector angle, which I believe is theta. And I believe this is the Omega angle. So it scans Omega from 95 to 178 in 0.5 width and 0.53 seconds to scan. So it's going to do all these data data sets or collect all this data at these different angles to get a full data set. And once you have the data set, then you can determine the structure. So you click cancel. So on this point, you would click start experiment and you would start collecting data on the experiment. So that concludes today's lesson on how do we go from mounting the crystal to determining the strategy needed for a full data collection. So on that note, this is Dr. Armand signing off. So next time, if you like the video or learn something new, make sure to click uh, the like button. And this here behind me is the Synergy, the Dr. Synergy S system that I was using. So on that note, Dr. Armand signing off.